global warming, melting polar ice. The two appear to go hand in hand. That's certainly the case when it comes to ice caps, but, but Antarctic sea ice is behaving in a different way. It's growing. Climate change sceptics have jumped on the discovery to discount climate change theories. And while scientists say it's a paradox, they believe climate change is again at play. Fiona Blackwood reports. Every winter, the Antarctic sea ice grows quickly. It's very dynamic. It changes a lot from day to day. Satellites show the rapid growth in sea ice coverage during the cold polar winter months. And thousands of kilometres away, meteorologists are glued to their computer screens, watching the daily sea ice show unfold. One of the first things I do of a morning is sit down with my cereal and have a quick look at how the sea ice is tracking. Do you often choke on your cornflakes when you look at what's happening? I, I, I sometimes, particularly at the moment, I'm quite amazed. Amazed that despite predictions of a decline, Antarctic sea ice continues to grow. 2013 has been the, the largest um, sea ice extent um, recorded since 1979. And this year's sea ice extent is tracking to be even greater. Currently, um, the sea ice extent is around about um, 12 and a half million square kilometres, which is about a million square kilometres above the long-term average. And to put that in perspective, Australia's landmass is about seven and a half million square kilometres. It's quite an increase. We're at record levels at the moment. And that's in stark contrast to the Arctic, where the ice is actually rapidly declining. When the extent of last year's sea ice was revealed, climate change sceptics were quick to respond. The global warming propagandists have been winning. Their deceptions will be revealed. Facts tend to mess up good theories. Could it be that historically we're due the next ice age and it's a sign of global cooling? While I may not admire your science, I can admire your wit. It goes against the, um, the um, hand-waving exercise that um, the temperatures are increasing, but sea ice is expanding or increasing in extent. That is a paradox, and uh, that is what we're trying to understand. Sea ice is a relatively thin veneer on the surface of the ocean. It's a very different beast to the ice sheets, which are kilometres thick. Glacial ice is formed by snow falling on the land, compressing and then flowing down to the sea via glaciers. And sea ice, as I said, is frozen seawater. And land or glacial ice is responding in the expected way to warming air and ocean temperatures. It's melting. But the sea ice story is more complex. While it's growing in some areas, it's shrinking in others. So in some regions, the sea ice season, the period of the year that's covered by ice, is three months shorter than it used to be. And in other areas, it's almost three months longer than it used to be. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is seeking answers, saying scientific theories explaining Antarctic sea ice trends are competing, incomplete and untested. There was a response um, along the lines that you suggest, that people say, well, how could climate be warming if sea ice is growing? And it's a, uh, the truth is that we know why, more or less, why the sea ice is growing around Antarctica. And it's doing what we expect. It actually confirms our understanding of climate science, doesn't refute it. Scientists believe westerly winds around Antarctica could be driving the expansion of the ice. So the winds have strengthened around Antarctica, and those stronger winds tend to push the ice further offshore and make the total area that's covered by ice a little bit bigger. And studies have linked the strengthening of the Antarctic westerly winds to human activities. One is the increase in greenhouse gases, the climate change driven by our emissions of CO2. But they're also linked to the ozone hole. The winds are sensitive to the, uh, to the, ozone, the amount of ozone over the Antarctic. But more work will need to be done to test the theories. There's still much we don't understand. The models actually suggest that sea ice should be declining already. 
Improving the models will mean collecting more data. Scientists are using autonomous underwater vehicles to help improve models that predict future ice extent, but to also answer more basic questions. The lack of information about the thickness is a big deficiency that's, that's holding up our understanding of what the processes are that are occurring there. So, whereas in the Arctic, um, we've had submarine up, uh, data since the 1950s, and that tells us that the Arctic sea ice cover has thinned by about 50% since that time. There's no such information from the Antarctic. Nutting out the sea ice puzzle is not only important for long-term climate change predictions, but also more day-to-day -day considerations, like shipping. It's a huge issue for shipping. So the sh uh, people that are going into the um, Antarctic, including the Aurora Australis, need better information on where the sea ice is, and particularly how thick it is. Sea ice has an impact on all sorts of species. As it forms, it uh, incorporates a lot of biological material into its mass, and this acts as a larder, its algal material, for creatures like krill. And they're very important at the base of the food chain to all kinds of apex predators, such as penguins and whales, etc. So as the sea ice marches out around Antarctica, there are scientists all around the world watching it grow and honing in on the reasons why.